So thank you for coming. Uh, my name is Corwin. I am the co-founder and the designer of Bounties Network. Um, we are just going to kind of introduce ourselves. We want to keep this super casual today and spend as little time talk, uh, with us talking as possible so that we can give you time uh, to you guys ask questions um, and uh, get started on the workshop um, activities, which are, by the way, going to last until next Monday. Um, the bounties will be open until next Monday. Um, we can get started on them today, let you guys ask some questions, um, and then give you guys help with any setup or anything that you need to do. So, yeah. Um, so, just to talk a little bit about Bounties Network. Uh, Bounties Network is a platform that allows uh, individuals to create projects um, and incentivize other individuals um, to complete those projects and get paid um, in cryptocurrency. Um, these sort of incentive mechanisms for a variety of experiments um, and lately we've been trending towards working with organizations uh, and community um, type structures to get uh, those community leaders to incentivize their members um, to complete tasks, to complete projects, um, to provide feedback to each other. Um, in a sort of decentralized manner, in a sort of open source manner. Um, so, we have um, actually done for DEF CON this year. Sorry, could you project a little bit more? Yes, yeah, sorry. One of the things that we've done for DEF CON this year is actually set up uh, a Bounties Network specifically for this DEF CON. So, if you go to japan.bounties.network, um, you will be able to see our Bounties Explorer, which is dedicated uh, to dedicated for this conference uh, specifically. There are already a ton of bounties of that. Anybody is welcome to complete um, and earn some ETH, some die um, for doing certain tasks around the conference. Um, but this is also where we will be hosting the bounties that we've created for this workshop in particular. Um, and here you can just find information about myself, um, and I'll let Zach introduce himself in the room. Hi everybody, uh, I'm Zach Kalman, I'm the project manager for Rimble. Uh, Rimble is an open source library of React components, uh, design uh, patterns, and UX guides uh, to make to help you make DApps that everyone can use. Um, Bounties Network and Rimble are kicking off this little experiment in decentralized uh, problem solving today with the goal of uncovering new UX patterns that might help improve that usability. Um, Rimble is a research driven offering and we are constantly researching UX problems that are common among dApps and prototyping and testing potential solutions with users. Um, and in doing that, we've uncovered a number of uh, uh, challenges that uh, people in this room might be familiar with, but we want uh, to bring a community around to coalesce around creative solutions. And so we're partner partnering with Bounties uh, on this initiative to incentivize uh, this collaborative uh, generation of these creative and effective UX solutions um, in response to these bounties. Uh, so Corwin's going to talk a little bit about the bounties themselves, um, and then we'll get into the, the meat and kind of substance of the prompts. And like Corwin said, we are going to try to keep this pretty casual and pretty quick because we want um, you guys to start talking about this. Um, people in this room are going to do the interesting work here uh, between now and now and Monday. So we want to make ourselves available. Um, but uh, for, for questions, um, but also uh, just have you guys start to talk to each other about uh, potential ideas as well. Um, so Corn's going to talk about kind of the structure a little bit of the bounties. Um, so for this workshop, uh, we have four bounties that we've created for you guys to sort of take on. Um, just out of curiosity, who in this room has a interest or experience currently works as a designer? Couldn't hear it because developer. the door was open. What? Couldn't hear it because the door was open. Okay. I'll say it again. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in. All 
All right, so we have four bounties that we've created for this workshop, um, and they're centered around design and UX and front end and usability for dApps. Uh, can I get just a brief show of hands of who is who works in any of those areas or who has like a keen interest in any of those areas? Okay, cool. Great, so what we want to do um, as we introduce these bounties is encourage you, uh, if you aren't, you know, uh, extremely technical, um, if you don't, don't have like a background in design, a background in UX, um, I would encourage you all to still attempt uh, to submit to these bounties. Um, we're kind of structuring them so that you are being incentivized to, to participate, um, and then there's larger incentives for people who want to go that step further um, to kind of go above and beyond in their submission. So what I want to do uh, is just talk about the um, submission requirements and the evaluation criteria um, as we introduce each of these bounties. Um, so, like Zach said, each of these bounties comes out of research that Brimble has done around usability problems that are have been identified in DApps, um, common usability problems. And so, we've created a prompt for one uh, or for four of these uh, usability issues that we've identified. And uh, the first of these is onboarding new DApp users. Um, so the submission requirements, and I'll just kind of go through this briefly and then show you what the other bounties are. Because um, the submission requirements and evaluation criteria for each of these bounties is going to be fairly similar. Um, like I said before, we want as many people to be able to participate as possible. So the minimum requirements for a submission to each of these bounties is going to be a clearly articulated and written explanation of your solution. Um, and the, the pain points that it attempts to, to solve from the prompt, um, and if possible, some sort of visual accompaniment to that written uh, explanation to sort of help you explain what your solution is and how you came about, uh, how you came to it. Um, ideal submissions would include design files, illustrating user flows, uh, prototypes, working demos, uh, links to source code, um, use of the Rimble component library is encouraged for those who are a little bit more technical and are curious or willing to experiment with that. It's really easy to get set up and we have um, guys up here that can help us do that uh, with you. Um, for evaluation criteria, so this is how we're going to be evaluating each of the submissions to these bounties. I won't uh, read through all of them there because they're available to you, but essentially um, does, this, does your solution provide a new and improved approach to these common usability problems? Um, and because of that, can, can we expect users to be able to accomplish the tasks they need to accomplish? Um, can the pattern be applied to a wide range of contexts? Um, you know, not all dApps share the same uh, share the same usability concerns, um, but you know, if you can come up with a solution that can be applied to more than one in more than one context, then that's always a plus. Um, implementation and fidelity. So again, we want everyone to be able to participate. So technical implementations and high fidelity submissions are not a requirement. You can keep things simple. You can keep things uh, your submissions limited to just expressions of ideas that you've thought through. Um, but you know, you get bonus points if your uh, submission is particularly um, complete and well thought through and thorough and um, has you know, deliverables that are attached to that submission that uh, can kind of show off what you have thought of and what you built. Um, and then the remaining criteria are going to be accessibility and error handling. So is your, are your students accessible? Um, and error handling, does it consider states uh, that the user might encounter when they are when they come into contact with these patterns? Um, these are more directed towards the more technical-minded folks uh, in the room. Um, so just to go through each of the prompts really quickly, so the first one is going to be about onboarding new DAP users. Um, 
The second is going to be about smart contract interaction. The third is going to be about transaction states. And the fourth is going to be about the need to address exploration. So I'll let uh, Zach kind of uh, expand upon what each of those uh, bounties are, what the prompts are, and how they sort of came to be, uh, how, the, how the problems came about. So we tried to put um, a pretty good amount of context into the, the, the text of the bounties themselves. So I'd encourage everyone, if you, if you can, to open them up um, and, and read through. I'm not going to go through, uh, like, read through these line by line um, in the interest of time, um, but uh, could be a helpful, helpful reference. So the first one here is onboarding new DAP users. Um, Rimble's research uh, has told us something that probably everyone in this room knows uh, very well, that it is really, really hard for someone new to Ethereum to use a DAP. Um, so, you know, the, the typical onboarding workflow has tons of pitfalls and, and areas for potential failure um, and abandonment and frustration and confusion. Um, so, you know, the process, usually at a high level, including something like connecting to a wallet, signing in um, to a wallet, adding funds, connecting the wallet to the DAP, uh, and then proceeding to try to accomplish whatever they were originally attempting to do. Um, is, a, is a process that uh, we have seen lots of attempted solutions, some more successful than, than others, but we think we'd all agree that this is a, a major pain point and one that is certainly confirmed as a, as a challenge through Rimble's research. Um, unfortunately for us, none of these are, uh, there's no one, one size fits all kind of global onboarding um, solution and uh, each application brings its own context and, and um, its own user goals that it's trying to fulfill um, and so uh, and it's, it's really having its own uh, e each application has its own conversation with the user and this is where I plug my friend Ryan uh, Ryan's workshop I think on Thursday on conversational design um, later on this week. Um, so the challenge here is to create a reusable pattern or set of patterns to improve upon some aspect of the onboarding workflow. Um, this could be uh, a, a model of the entire onboarding process um, or just a, a novel approach to some portion of it. Um, so you know, we have a laundry list of, of relevant um, scenarios that accounted for here, um, checking for web through cable in the browser, checking for a connected wallet and different, different um, scenarios involved there, um, checking for a specific network, um, signing a wallet message, funding the wallet and funding the wallet in different ways, um, getting the balance of, of an ETH address, displaying uh, current ETH price or current gas price. Um, so there's, there's a I just want to reiterate, we aren't saying um, this, this prompt is to create a perfect end-to-end -end onboarding flow. If you have that, that would be an amazing submission to this, uh, to this bounty. Um, but improving in a novel way on any aspect or angle on that, that workflow is going to be valuable. And if collectively we're all doing that, we think that there's a tremendous opportunity there's also an opportunity for, uh, if you have friends in the room or if you have any interest in collaborating, uh, to sort of take these prompts piecemeal and sort of say, you know, I'm interested in this part of the process, this person is interested in this part of the process, is there an opportunity for us to collaborate on a, on a solution uh, in an attempt to submit something that's a little bit more high caliber uh, because there are going to be prizes that are larger than just the payout that you're going to receive for uh, your submission being accepted, um, and I'll go over that at the end. So the second prompt is on on-chain or is on smart contract interactions. Um, so uh, on-chain interactions with smart contracts typically introduce some levels of complexity that are greater than um, the uh, just a, 
a, a basic wallet to wallet transaction experience for users. And product teams and users, end users, would all collectively benefit from having a set of consistent patterns uh, for a lot of that common functionality associated with that process. Things that we've seen come up in our research, there are um, estimating gas, gas costs, um, dealing with transaction time. <clears throat> Uh, but we've also looked at more complex work, uh, end to end workflows like opening CDP. Um, so, similarly uh, to the, the previous prompt, if you can think, if you have a novel approach to any one uh, aspect to smart contract interaction, user experience, um, whether that's just a, one of those types of uh, individual functionalities such as, such as estimating gas price or uh, a new approach to an entire workflow, opening a CDP, uh, an ERC-20 token swap, um, all of those would be fantastic submission ideas uh, for, for this prompt. Um, so again, we've kind of included a little bit of a laundry list of, of possible ideas, um, but these aren't necessarily uh, constraints, um, just a place to get started. Um, the third prompt is on transaction states. Uh, this is another one that has come up over and over again in our user research that uh, everyone, nearly everyone we've talked to has expressed concern or lack of confidence around transactions. Um, they're permanent, they're scary, uh, they involve your money, um, and, and that creates a lot of tension and nervousness uh, and anxiety among users. Um, if you're in this room, you probably know to look at Etherscan or MetaMask uh, to, to understand more about a transaction, but a lot of users who aren't as familiar don't know to do that. Um, this, uh, so how can we create a set of patterns that can um, the build, that the DAP builders can use to provide a more informative experience that alleviates anxiety during the transaction process to help people understand more about what is happening um, without overloading them with information um, and, and accounting for different contexts. Uh, some where more information is needed, some where less information is needed. Um, so here we reference a, you know, some potential and uh, we we can get into it, it's okay. Um, but some of the things, some of those scenarios might be um, a user rejecting a transaction or a tra transaction getting rejected for, for low gas, um, transaction um, stuck pending in the mempool due to, to, to low gas, um, resubmitting a transaction. <clears throat> uh, so there's a lot of the, these kind of transaction related scenarios that uh, are, are, are um, severe pitfalls for the, the uninitiated user and, and really strong opportunities here. Um, and then the last prompt we have is around, um, is around wallet exploration, wallet address exploration. Um, we recently performed an inventory of, of patterns, UI patterns, um, among uh, a you know pretty wide number range of DApps uh, for displaying information associated with an Ethereum address in, in the DAP. Um, and we got this just huge sprawling variance in type of information. Some were very simple displays of just a, an address and a balance, and some were these rich um, displays of information including tokens and um, other assets and transaction histories and um, currency conversion, um, lots and lots and lots of information. Um, again, each DAP, each DAP has its own context and its own need, and these are all potentially very valid approaches, but we would all benefit, I think, from more consistent patterns for displaying information associated with the wallet address in a DAP. And how can we start to create some of the, those, those models that recognizing each DAP has its own context, but can we create elements that are recognizable to users 
and start to build some more of that confidence. So um, things we, possible scenarios to account for here, might be wallet balance, recent transactions, I mentioned tokens, um, uh, currency conversion to, to fiat, um, uh, adding font funds through, a, um, through an on-ramp, those sorts of things. So again, we wanted to keep this short and, and put a lot of this into the, 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 the bounties themselves because really we don't see um, this moment as what's important. What we see, where, where the value uh, we see coming is in the work that hopefully you guys are going to do over the next um, week. Uh, and we are here to answer questions now. We're here, we're going to be, you know, around to answer questions this week. Please feel free to put comments uh, on the bounties themselves. We'll be keeping an eye on those. Um, on Twitter, uh, really wherever you can reach us, we will, we will be uh, here to answer. Yeah, so just a few more housekeeping things um, before we open it up to any questions that you guys might have. Um, so some requirements, well actually let me talk about the, the prizes first. So uh, I've gone through some of the evaluation criteria for how we're going to be judging the submissions that anybody chooses to uh, submit with their bounty fulfillment for any of these prompts. You're welcome to do one, you're welcome to do all of them. Um, but basically, depending on that, or based on that evaluation criteria, uh, your submission will, will either be accepted or it won't. If it is accepted, um, you will receive the amount uh, that is indicated in the payout for the bounty, which is uh, around $5, 0 0.03 feet. Um, and this is just meaning having your submission be accepted that meets the minimum requirements again. So this is. Um, submissions that meet some of the criteria um, will likely be accepted. You don't need to hit, you know, check every single box because there are some of these evaluation criteria that are more geared towards the technical folks in the room. Um, but it, there's kind of a second tier of uh, prizes that we want to give out for exceptional submissions. So these. Uh, are going to be submissions that meet most, if not all, of the evaluation criteria. Um, sort of submissions that we see go above and beyond uh, to provide, you know, demos, prototypes, examples uh, of things that are maybe particularly innovative, particularly thoughtful, and particularly <coughs> thorough. Um, and so, for each prompt, what's going to happen is there's going to be a first prize winner and a second prize winner. Uh, the first prize is going to receive uh, 0.54 ETH, um, and that's equivalent to $100 at the time of the activation of this bounty. Um, and the second prize is going to receive 0.27 ETH, which is equivalent to $50 US. Um, so we just really want to encourage, you know, we have that lower tier incentive because we want to encourage everyone to participate. Um, you know, earn some ETH, have fun, talk to your uh, colleagues about solutions that you have, ideas that you have. Uh, but then we also want to incentivize people that want to take that step further um, and really go deep and explore solutions to some of these uh, really common feasibility problems that we've identified. So some of the things you're going to need to participate uh, are going to be a wallet and you're going to need to set up an account, sign up for an account on Bounties Network. Um, the sign up process for an account on Bounties Network is really straightforward. You essentially just link your wallet, provide you know, a, a minimum amount of information. It's really kind of up to you what information you want to provide. And once you've done that, um, you are free to submit to any of these bounties once your submission is ready. Um, and again, there's a comment section on each of the bounties where you're welcome to ask questions. Uh, I will be receiving those since I was the one who created the bounties, uh, but we're going to be sort of collectively uh, addressing each of those questions. Um, and those conversations can start on the bounties or you can get in touch with us um, you know, via Twitter or what have you, and we'll, we will get back to you. We'll sort of be in conversation throughout the duration of the Bounty's um, active timeline, uh, which again is until next Monday. Um, 
also, we will we also encourage people to comment on other people's submissions. Um, if you see someone submit something, and because all of the submissions are going to be visible to everyone that's participating in this workshop, um, if you see someone submitting some, some solution, um, you know. Tell them what you think about it. Tell them, ask them questions. Ask them, have you thought about this? Um, you know, because that really kind of opens doors and opportunities for collaboration, which is really what Bounty's Network is all about. Um, you know, our focus is on community. Our focus is on collaboration and sort of incentivizing that and encouraging that um, and seeing which ways we can use those mechanisms. Um, so please. Know, be as active as, as you can be and, um, and don't hold back. Um, so yeah, that's it. Uh, any questions, feel free to ask. And as with the remaining time, um, if you want to stick around and start doing things like signing up for your account on Bounties Network, reading the prompts, you are perfectly welcome to do that and we'll be around to help you do that if you have any questions around setting up a wallet, setting up an account. Um, and then we will also be around to answer questions about the specific prompts. Uh, but the prompts will be active for the next week, and you're welcome to work on them throughout the week. And we, once the deadline, uh, once we reach the deadline, we will be accepting the submissions. You'll know, be receiving your email uh, instantaneously once your submission is accepted. And then we'll be contacting the first place and second place winners to receive those uh, higher tier prizes for those acceptable submissions. So, any questions? Yes. What's the percentage of uh, bounties that never gets even submitted to? Percentage Doesn't even get one submitted. Never get submissions. Yes. I don't know that off the top of my head, but I can uh, I can get back to you on that. Ballparking it. Ballpark. Um, very few. Very few. A lot of the submissions or a lot of the bounties that we're, we create or that get created on Bounty's Network are in partnership with uh, individuals or partnership with organizations. And so because we've kind of created that um, grounds for experimenting, and since a lot of the bounties come out of partnerships or events or conferences or you know, efforts like that, um, most of them see, see activity and see fulfillment. Um, we don't see a lot of people at this point in time, since Bounty's Network is very young and is still in a very much an experimental stage, uh, we don't see a lot of people creating bounties uh, just on their own. So like, you don't see a lot of people saying, hey, I'll pay you a zero point whatever ETH to bring me pizza and that actually happening. Um, although you could do that. Very easily. Um, but so, yeah, hopefully that's a question over here. Hi, uh, my name is Jody Rich. We run a conference in New York in February all about NFTs for developers. Um, and we'd love to talk to you about your great work on bounties for our audience. Um, my question, and maybe it's for the room, is is $5 enough to yeah. get an engineer to actually? Um, make a submission and is $50 and $100 a, a big enough prize? That's a good question. Designer. What do you people think? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That was so, my second question. So, um, the reason we started off with like a lower um, submission payout for like the individual submissions is a couple reasons. One is because the minimum Sort of requirement for a submission is basically writing a paragraph about what you think a potential solution for something would be, and maybe including a sketch of, a, of what that looks like, something very low fidelity. And so, you know, for those less technical minded people, we want to be able to reward them with something. Uh, but we also recognize um, that for the people that are going to be spending more time and more effort in their submissions that, you know, that's where the higher tier reward comes in. But this is actually a really great point because this is a problem that exists in the world of uh, contest style freelancing, I guess is what you could call it. 
where you know you have a lot of people working who are not guaranteed to receive payment for anything. Right? This is something that is a huge problem on platforms that you see like Fiverr, platforms that you see like Upwork, uh, you know, things like 99 Designs, where you know there's hundreds of people submitting their work, hundreds of people spending hours um, doing these things, and they're not getting compensated. Um, that's something that we really care about. It's something that we don't have a solution for right now. And it's something that we want to work towards a solution for. Um, so I just want to make sure, make sure to say that. I also want to say that we are the type of uh, platform and organization that is happy to have this conversation. And if you in the room feel like you want to like discuss uh, openly about what a more uh, reasonable payout would be for like those just initial budget submissions, and as well as what those pri uh, prizes might be for um, those exceptional submissions. Let's talk about it, and we're totally willing to increase those and change those. We're also willing to extend the deadline if you guys feel like uh, the time that's given is not enough. Um, I will say one thing that we did talk about was maybe having changing the prize to be a range and taking into account the time and effort that has gone into the submission um, and paying the first prize amount, increasing the first prize amount to account for those kinds of things. So let's definitely have those conversations. We're totally open to it. We're not, you know, we don't want anyone to feel like their uh, work, their hard work has gone unrewarded. And this is a problem that exists across all sorts of platforms um, that are, you know, sort of, Attempting to solve this distributed, remote, decentralized work uh, problem space. Um, and that's a, a conversation that we're interested in continuing to have. Pick the vote. Have the room vote on the question I answered alone, but let's see what the others say as well. Yeah, he thinks that five dollars is enough. <laughs> Anyone? So I think a, a better question than five, is five dollars enough for a submission? Because ultimately my submission could be a paragraph that's a crappy two minute sketch, which you know I think that's fair. Uh, do you think we, it would be reasonable to maybe introduce like additional tiers for, with additional criteria? Is that more reasonable? I think the, like, the submission reward is, could be zero, and it would be still okay. The, uh, the problem for me is like, well, I work as a designer, I know my hourly rate, right. you mentioned the, uh, the winning solution should include uh, demos and prototypes and explanation of error states, and uh, that's many hours. Um, and the best case scenario of $100 doesn't cover almost like a single hour. Right. Um, and on top of that, there is a risk that I will not even get that. Right. So I'm looking at that into hours times risk multiplier, and that equals no. Okay. Yeah, that's totally fair. Yeah, that's totally fair. Um, you know, one thing we had 111 people sign up for this uh, workshop, which obviously there's not 111 people in this room, which is good, which is great. We can be a little bit more flexible with this. Um, so no, I hear you, and I I agree with you. As a designer, I agree with you. Um, as a designer, you know, as we attempt to solve problems specifically for. You know, like spaces like design, um, you know, and where those kinds of projects and, and workflows and careers, like, where do those fit into platforms like this? And how do you address the problems that are innate to those those spaces? Um, you know, again, you want to make sure that it's fair. Um, also, one thing we're considering, and this is not an excuse, but one thing we are considering is that we are like at the bottom of a bear market and offering half the fee for, and, and you know, there's like that that potential that, but you know, who says that it's never gonna, or who says that they know anything about the price of the fee, right? Um, but yeah, so let's let's like have that conversation. Let's change the uh, reward amounts. Um, I want everyone who participates to feel like it's fair and to feel like uh, that they're not just doing this for nothing. Because ultimately, if that's how everyone feels, no one's going to do it, right? One of the challenges with the, you know, making the, the, the criteria somewhat burdensome 
um, is that when we're talking about the, the challenges with user experience in some of these areas, um, issues like error states are where those a lot of those user failures are, are happening. And so that was that was um, our rationale for elevating that as to uh, to the kind of the top top level of, of evaluation criteria. Um, normally, that would probably be something kind of as an app, something like an afterthought in a um, a competition like model. Um, but just in, in in the research that we've done, that's where we see a lot of users fail. Um, and so we don't want that to be left behind in some of these solutions. Um, so I guess there's a little bit of an inherent tension in doing that, but not necessarily make, but, but how do we make that worthwhile? Um, and so, uh, you know, maybe the answer is to make that, make some of those evaluation criteria a little bit more flexible um, so that, you know, we're saying, when we say how is it handling errors, maybe it, it, it's uh, you know, maybe we remove that from from the like critical acceptance criteria, but um, introduce it more as part of the prompt uh, to to um, recognize that that's that's part of the, the critical problems that, that we're solving. So not necessarily saying you have to have comprehensive error state coverage. And, um, can I change the topic just for a minute and yeah, ask sure. you a question, Zach? I understand the problem that you're trying to solve with Grimble is to um, bring in you know, non-blockchain users and to try and make the experience uh, much easier for them. Um, I've just tried to use Grimble app demo on my phone um, and it says your browser doesn't support our blockchain features. And I'm just wondering why you assume that I have to have a wallet be able to use your tools, you must have put a lot of thought into that. Why do I have to have a wallet to use your tools? Well, that, uh, I mean, that particular, you don't have to use, oh, that is a, that is a demo of wallet specific components featured in, in Ripple. That's not, uh, that's not Ripple's public facing website or documentation or Anything like that. The, the tool is the component library itself for developers. Not, it's not a. a it, it's meant for people in the to build tools for end users. No, no. But I think one of the big mistakes we make as a community is we assume that people a understand what a wallet is and b that they want to have a wallet. And I think that's a huge, that's a huge mistake. Yeah, absolutely. We we completely yeah, we completely agree. Absolutely. We completely agree with you. Okay. Yeah. And I think we're at the point at, at this point in time. What can we tech like practically right now? What can we implement that's not what we already have, which is wallets and the restrictions that those. Provide? We have we have um, a guide on connect on uh, a UX guide on connecting to a wallet that I think better articulates our recommendations there. We also want to say, um, recently, bounties have worked for us in these meta transactions that allows for uh, new users who haven't, who, uh, haven't gone through the process of acquiring ETH to still be able to uh, fulfill a bounty. And basically what we do is like we subsidize the gas fees for those users. And so that's an example of like a first step, right? Totally. That's really um, cool. Exactly. And that's like something that we're looking to expand and to, to continue to experiment with is how can we use mechanisms like that? Because obviously, you know, there, there is a cost to the network and, and the, you know, in the future, hopefully people will recognize the benefits um, outweigh the cost of things like gas and, and whatnot. Um, but until then, there are things like meta transactions that we can use. Um, sort of offload some of that, take some of that pressure off. Well, or we'll use a side chain. Trust. Or we'll use a side chain. Yeah. yeah. So that's one thing we're talking about um, as well. Um, how did you give any insight about the bounties on the engineering uh, perspective? 
uh, because when you make a question for a broader answer uh, and you have a lot of contributions to that, you can have a lot of overlap or on work. Yeah. If somehow, I, I, I think it's a very hard thing to do, but if somehow you can make the questions more specific and go fill in them with that, instead of having a few options with a broad scope that would really take a lot of time, like uh, we have said, well, there could be like a 20 or even a hundred of tasks that are going to be completed and I don't need to work on them anymore. So in a few minutes, or at most a few hours, I can make a contribution that I am very sure it's going to be a concise and very good uh, used contribution for what you guys are asking. It's much more secure for me to contribute to a specific subject than try to win a prize for a very broad sure. subject. Sure. So breaking out each of the prompts into more specific bounties that have like more limited and specific criteria is yeah. yeah, just to build idea. on this point, I think sure. uh, the issue is just working within the creative fields. It's harder to bond with those type of tasks in the first place. Absolutely. So, so I think if you guys came to the, the front of the room and said, hey, guys, we're going to do this for free, everyone would be willing to do it. As soon as you put a five dollar value, as humans, we want consistency in our thinking, and I probably yeah. view ourselves. So five dollars makes me feel attacked of all of the Whereas you said, hey, do it for free, I'd be gung ho about it. And sure. I think everyone would be working right now instead of having these conversations. Sure. So maybe you guys have to kind of go back and look at what type of tasks are actually Absolutely. geared towards bounties and what Absolutely. doesn't really work in that context. That. And that's like something that we're trying to figure out, yeah. right? And that's something that, like, I, I want to say, first of all, that I, like, fucking love hearing all of this feedback from you guys because it's insight into and into how we can evolve the, the product and how we can you know it's it's affirming to hear you guys echo the same uh, skepticism that I have towards the old the platform that I'm building right um, for things like you know competition style anything really and what you know what is it how do you make that fair can you make it fair uh, how does it apply to specific skill sets uh, does it work for some and not for others. You know, these are all questions that we're attempting to, to ask. Um, and that's why we're, the Bounty Network in particular is kind of shifting our focus less on, to be less on uh, the sort of like competition style, like freelancing platform and more about like engaging with communities and getting communities to incentivize their community members to uh, participate in some sort of collective collaborative action, uh, that sounds different than something like Fiverr, you know, which is like, pay five bucks and you get a logo. That's not what we want bounties to be. Um, and that's not where, that's not, not, not the direction that bounties are moving in. Um, and so that's where, if you, you know, if you have a chance, uh, just kind of, I'd love it if you guys could go on and just check out some of the projects that we've done that are more like community oriented and getting uh, you know partners and communities to work with us to incentivize community members to do um, things that benefit the community. Um, this uh, you know this exercise in particular uh, does resemble a little bit more of that like competition kind of thing. Part of that comes from the fact that we have like sort of this restriction of this like workshop type of event um, uh, and so that's not necessarily you know not, we're not necessarily saying that that's I mean, just ideal in this case yeah so what if we just get paper and some stuff and here start just drawing out things uh, and then in an hour say okay this is what we come up with uh, maybe that's an idea just get your hands dirty and do something yeah okay. well you have a week to do that and if you yeah the thing for me is i don't have a week because i have a very short sure. schedule yeah, yeah, yeah. So I don't know if everybody here has a whole week to spend, uh, but I would love to spend now an hour with some people to come with creative solutions. And yeah, we're, we're you're absolutely welcome to do that. And for the people who want to continue to engage in the context of conversations around these problems, like I'd love to continue talking to you about that stuff. Because I like that's those are the problems that we're trying to solve, um, and they're hard, and there's no clear answers. Um, and so yeah, I really appreciate everyone's uh, feedback.
to, to build on what Akil said, I agree 100%. And I agree with him as well. I would uh, do this a breakout brother. And you're probably putting it on the, right, on the wrong perspective. Like Akil was right saying that if you put a price on it, you're making it kind of an insult. You should uh, maybe focus on the intrinsic motivator, like give something beyond the money, like credit. I don't know, if you are going to put somewhere the visibility of somebody who has found the solution. Mm. That is maybe for a designer as, that is entering the space, right. a better solution than five bucks. Right, right. Also, in this space, we are like 200 designers and we know all each other. It's a hyper-technical uh, space. And we know that you need to know a lot. You need to have studied a lot. So it's a very specific kind of designer that can tackle these questions that you have. So it's for specialized designers. And again, if you put a price on it, you're pricing it wrong. Until you put the right price on it. But, uh, so. Yeah, part of, our, part of the goal in, in doing it this way was to try and get people that aren't necessarily, that don't necessarily fall into that category. Um, and so, you know, we wanted people to come and participate and to help to think about these problems with us who may be like first time DAP users or, or, or whatnot, um, who do run into these problems, who maybe have like limited experience with, um, with DAPs, uh, but have, and have run into these problems before and have thoughts about them that they would like to share. So, um, so, so can, can I just add, um, sorry, what's your name? Beltran. Bel uh, Beltran. Um, Cameron and I are running a conference in five months in New York, and if there are any designers who would like a, uh, an incentive or a bounty program that fits what you think is right, we are completely open to an experiment in February this year in New York. and so. If you think we can do something that's better than five dollars or zero dollars, um, please tell us because we would love to run a bounty program during NFT NYC that suits what the, the community what the community thinks is yeah. right. Yeah. Sure. Thank that's you. Soft. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Let's chat. Cool. Well, with that, um, I think we'll just kind of let you guys go if you feel like you want to stay or have any questions about like the bounty in particular, the bounty network in particular, uh, feel free. Um, and again, these would be, I, I, I want to have a place to continue this discussion for those who care to um, to continue the discussion around things like pricing and, and <coughs> fair rewards and, and things like that. Um, so let's, um, what would be the best way to do that? Um, off the top of their heads, uh, some kind of Slack channel or Telegram group or something like that. I know there's everyone's in a million of those already, but this, all of this feedback is valuable to me, and I'm interested in, in hearing it and collecting it. So let's put up a free bounty on the bounty now. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll, I'll do that today. And, and have uh, Stephen Pink uh, redeem it. He wrote a book on this. That's right. Actually, you're right. You're right. Okay. It's called Drive, uh, Autonomy, Mastery, and Purpose. Those are the three drives, especially for creative yeah. kind of uh, tasks, for which he proves also that, research proves that uh, motivating through extrinsic motivators like money, it's right. wrong. You yeah. will not get the results yeah. as if you're using intrinsic motivators, which is why I was suggesting <laughs> you should look for other rewards or sure, payouts. Sure, sure. Could we could we talk about that? You can join the Bounty Slack. Um, so if you go to the Bounties Network uh, site, um, actually that would be a great place to do it. Um, what I so I am actually going to do what you're just what you're okay. suggesting. I'm going to put up a bounty um, to continue this conversation um, and just have people that want to participate in the conversation to submit. Um, and then there's also, you have the option to join our Slack, uh, which is like a community Slack that we, uh, that the Bounties team has. Um, and we'd love to engage with you about these kinds of difficult problems um, on there.
Is there like a Rimble X Bounty channel or something? I can make one. We can. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And we recognize, you know, this was a very thoughtful discussion. Um, we hope you recognize we are kind of operating within the constraints of the conference schedule, and that drove a little bit of the structure yeah. and, and planning this to be a week long kind of asynchronous thing as opposed to more of a, a dedicated in-person session. Um, we'd love to, to spend to spend that time too. Um, and like I said before, we are going to be here. Um, so, you know, grab one of us and, and we'd love to talk um, and encourage all of you guys to, to spend some time um, together if you are interested in participating. Um, and really uh, look forward to seeing what people can uh, come up with and uh, appreciate everybody's participation. Perhaps before people leave the room, you can write out the prompts on the board and if people want to kind of pull us on the topics or yep. collaboration later, that would yeah. be a good opportunity. Okay. All right, well, thank you, everyone.